Eric, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Carson. So actually, I have some of my colleagues here today uh, to kind of understand not exactly what Carson is all about, but uh, before Carson, what kind of things that I do, what kind of things that I experienced before. So uh, I mean, just to give you a quick rundown on uh, the platform that I built. Basically, we're a used car trading platform. We help you to sell cars, uh, and we can help you sell it to anyone, or sorry, any dealers uh, in the country. Uh, and we started in 2015 from Malaysia, um, and now we're in Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Singapore as well. Um, I think last year alone, we transacted about 14,000 cars. And looking back at the first month when we started the business, it was only about uh, 30 cars in the in, in, in 2015, sorry, 2016. Uh, January. So I think we came a long way and a lot of things that we do has been um, really almost on a month-to-month -month basis is something new. So which you know always keeps us all on a very challenging environment to, to, to be doing better and better. So and this I think today I was invited for this presentation and I think it's really not a, not really for me to talk about my business but really for me to tell you before custom what kind of life I was actually in, right? And uh, what I've been through as well. So, and uh, I want to make this as fun as possible. So I, I kind of actually restructured the entire phase, different phase of my life, starting from when I was still in uh, high school, um, with movie posters, or if not, posters, right? So, so I think from that you can get a, you can relate back to why I used some of these posters to sort of describe the kind of time that I was experiencing during then. So, um, yeah, so, so basically I think this is the, the phase one. Yeah, my, my very early days, uh, young and dangerous. I'm not sure if anyone, is there anyone that has not seen this movie at all or don't know about this? Yeah, very much you guys know. So you can see from the tattoo from my hands here as well. I'm, I'm, the, yeah, I'm the one at the back. So, um, yeah, so I was actually in DJ, SMDJ, so very nearby, um, and uh, um, pretty much I didn't really spend time in school at all. Uh, very bottom of the class, whenever there's 40 people, there's only 39 because I'm not there. Um, I'm always in the cyber cafe called ProX, which is just uh, 15 minutes walk away. Yeah, that's what I do every morning, 7 o'clock when the bell rang. Right? So I spend a lot of time playing games because I like games. Right. And I, 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 I make it to a point where I actually join competitions, get sponsored by Cyber Cafe and all. And well, of course, by doing that, you also feel mostly all your classes and uh, being a very bad person in the school. So uh, I just realized that actually Matthew was we are from the same school, same year as, and I don't think we know. Maybe looks looks a bit familiar, but we we haven't come across each other and say hi before. Yeah, and not just school in our same year. So I think that's, that's what I'm trying to say because I still remember in my form 5, uh, the yearbook, the nostalgia yearbook, if you are ever from DJ, there was a nickname for me. Um, my nickname is uh, David Copperfield. <laughs> so yeah, so and uh, I was, yeah, it took me five seconds to get it, so, but, but yeah, it's quite true. When I think of it, it's like, yeah, I, I, I'm rarely in the school. Um, and when I'm in school, nobody actually realized that as well. So I'm like in and out, in and out without people knowing. So I think I didn't really took an interest in, in study um, and instead I, I, I took an interest in things that I really love, things that I, I want to do very well in it. I'm not sure whether that's right or wrong, but at the end of the day, coming looking at where I am right now, I think is, is a, the kind of path that I choose almost in my entire life. And and then I went into college, right? So I was from Sunway College. I joined Sunway, I went to Sunway to took up uh, CEAT. So it's uh, a path to go to ACCA and eventually be an accountant. So that was back in the time where Sunway and Monash are still in the same campus, right? Not even separated. Um, and <clears throat> the reason why I took up accounting is because I wanted to get out of study life as soon as possible. I wanted to start working, I wanted to start earning money and accounting or accountant being one of those costs where it takes you only three years to complete and on top of that, it's also one of those professional uh, profession where you could earn a quite a good starting income right? compared to the other 
say marketing, uh, uh, say advertising, or anything else, right? So, <clears throat> so I took this and, and started my first year. So, and I still remember the, the first on the first day when I walked into the class, and I met some of my senior because there's year one where we are starting, and there's year two, and there's this uh, guy who look at me, look at the, all of us who just came in and say, hey, I think you chose the wrong course. <laughs> so, yeah, because all of them, mostly based on the same reason, came in and eventually took that course, graduated even. And to be honest, I have a few friends that in the same course, they graduated as well. End up joining Big Four, within one or two years, they came out and become their own boss. Like, you know, some would be doing a, opening a bar, in some way SS2 and some will be actually jumping different production and doing something completely unrelated to uh, accounting. Yeah, so I, I think this is the kind of uh, reason why we actually choose something um, in the course during a you know college time, right? So and as for me, um, very quickly I regretted the decision. So I I managed to to basically blaze through the first year, but towards the second year then. Um, I still remember, I think it's a tax paper. I failed that twice, and I told myself I can't take this anymore. So, and I decided to actually drop out from uh, Sunway, drop out from SCCA. Um, and yeah, so I was actually thinking about what should I do next. So you know, it's 18, 19 years old, right? You, you think a lot about earning money and like looking great in front of your friends. So, <clears throat> so, and of course there are some great friends who are already trying good you know, BMW, Express Cities, and then I realized that they are in this MOM called Lamberger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried a lot of stupid stuff at first, trust me. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, yes, you know, young child a little bit, you know, tell me more about the story. Uh, starting plan 2, 3, 4, 5, that's all you need to pay. Eventually, ask you to pay 30,000 ringgit. So, yeah, I think, um, so I went through the whole, 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 plan with them and uh, eventually join because I can see some money there, I can see some potential. Um, and the thing about Alan Berger is the product, the products are great, just that the way they sell it in the whole MLM way is, is not the way that be sustainable. So and uh, for me, I know that from even since day one that I joined. <coughs> so what happened was I, I think basically spent about 9 to 10 months to build up my entire network. Um, and to be honest, I actually earned quite a bit of money there. Um, and that's the whole intention, you see, because I wanted to utilize that money to be my starting capital to do something that I really want. Um, I didn't want to go back, go back to study life anymore, so I, I had thought of doing this. Um, and as you know, this is also one of those journey that you will lose quite a bit of friends. So I, I can recall a lot of people would not want a young child, I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's like, it's like, hi. Yeah, there's no WhatsApp, there's no read and no reply. It's just SMS, you know. So nobody would, nobody would actually know that, right? So, so for me, it's really a lot of events that avoiding me. I can feel it. Um, yeah. So glad we're not, we not met yet. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, so nine to ten months later, with that money, I came out and I wanted to start my own business. So, uh, and of course, in the process, you talk to a lot of people, right? A lot of friends. Uh, so, so happened, I have two other friends who uh, also have the same ambition, wanted to do the same thing. Um, and we were bouncing ideas, what should we do, right? So that should be around 2006, I think. 2006, yeah. And uh, let me see. Yeah, so 2006, uh, I got my really first days of being an entrepreneur. Um, and it's not actually Warcraft, but this is actually a, a print magazine that distributed to the neighborhood, like to your household, right? When you open up your, your, your mailbox, you will see like a magazine there. Um, if you remember, if you're ever in Kupong area like 10 years ago, uh, I'm not sure if you remember this magazine called Media Focus, right? Yeah. So it sort of distributed with the local ads uh, uh, to the local communities. Um, and to us, it's thought, we thought of doing the same thing, but in a more nationwide basis, starting from PJ and then Pucho and then the rest of the other places. So, um, and the concept is not too much of media focus, but rather on a little bit more towards like uh, the group buy concept, sort of like group bond, but in an offline manner. Um, so <coughs> we basically, you know, go through the, a lot of ideas and uh, concept, talk to clients, uh, get some of them to actually be on board to be on our first issue because it's free, 
and then uh, we, we started hiring some really pretty girls after we print up the magazines and just going around and, and, and hand out the, uh, the free copies, right? So, so that was the way we, we, we captured exposure in the very beginning. Um, and we, we kind of, we, we did that for about three, three issues and it's like a bi-weekly issues. Uh, and we, by then we actually burned out all our money because um, we, yeah, we, didn't, we didn't manage to earn too much from, from this activity or from this venture. So it was actually our, our first taste of being an entrepreneur but um, just based off a good idea we thought it would work but didn't really execute it very well. So, but that is my first venture of all of the others, uh, which there's a few more. Because right after this, then of course we disbanded um, and the company also we closed it. Um, so I had to think of something else to do, right? And if you remember, I have no diploma, no degree. So, so I wanted to make sure that I can find something that can truly sort of catapult me to something else. Um, and it was through another session of Yang Cha, then I talked to my other friend. And uh, he basically walked me through of uh, this game called World of Warcraft, right? Now some of you might have played this game, and to me, I'm never into uh, this kind of open world MMORPG, right? So, but when when he when he told me about the story of how he can earn, um, let me see, um, about thousand ringgit every other day, just based just just by playing World of Warcraft, that that is something really groundbreaking for me, right? Or for anyone, like just by playing it, you get a thousand ringgit. So. <clears throat> Then uh, I realized that it's actually a botting program that you can at the same time run multiple bots and let them farm goals from the game itself. See, it's the things that look quite dodgy. <laughs> and I don't know why. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, I know why I should do this. So, so, but yeah, so, so then that, oh, it was amazing, right? So I went to his house, like, there's a three different laptops set up with full equipment, not laptops, sorry, the CPU, uh, the desktop, and you can see there's like one lab, one desktop will be running like five, seven accounts and all, right? So, and of course, immediately I, I invested into that business, right? So I also uh, bought like three, I think three, yeah, three different CPU, uh, three very nice screen, and you need to buy a lot of, uh, what you call the world of work, uh, the wow uh, account, where each one will cost you about a few hundred bucks. So, um, and there's no Shopee back then, so you had to wait for all those, uh, you know, codes to come to you from US or from somewhere else. I don't know where, but uh, you should take a few days. But because why I said this, it's, it's very important to know that botting program is illegal, right? They will always try to catch you if they found, found out from the players or from the moderator. And what it means is you will risk your account being banned and then you rebuild your account again. And no character can do the half 1,000 a day unless you are at the maximum level uh, yeah, for the character. So, so, and to one character from 0 to 60, which is the highest at that point of time, it will take you about two weeks. So, meaning for every account that you invest, only two weeks later you can put them into farming and then you can start getting back the money, right? So, it's a very business favorite concept and at the end, <laughs> so see, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, we were doing well for a few months. And why a few months? Because one day, after you know, going out for lunch, you know, talking about where, what should we do, should we open up a few more? Uh, we came back to the, our own home, our own house, um, and then I realized that um, all of my accounts have been locked up. Right. So something is wrong. You know, I saw that before. You know, but not in a way where everything is just locked up like that. So and I immediately, basically, went to Google it um, and found that Blizzard, which is the owner of uh, Warcraft. Uh, they successfully filed a lawsuit and this company had to close down immediately, right? So it means that my business just go down to the drain right from that, that day. And um, I think this is the point where I truly actually lose every single bit of money that I've earned from uh, at, at now end. And uh, yeah, so it's a second venture, kind of failed. Um, and to restart right now, it was actually pretty tough. Because again, you know, who would actually accept me to, to start a, um, about to be working in a company, if not, unless I would start from the very bottom, right? So, so it was actually something very hard for me to accept, to be honest. So I spent uh, basically quite a few months, basically lock myself in a room, or if not, just hang out with friends who 
uh, who, who doesn't really know about this, but just pretend that everything is okay, right? So um, that's 2007, 2008 actually, 2008. So I was already about 20 plus. So a lot of my friends, they're like you, came out from uni, maybe came out from, uh, graduated from colleges and now starting their first job, or maybe even already three years, four years into the job. But for me, I'm still trying to find something. And yeah, <clears throat> 2008, uh, spending a few months uh, just basically escaping from the reality. Right? Um, but at the same time, for the few months, I'm also jumping from part time job to part time jobs. So I was actually a club promoter, I think, in World of Sport. Um, I was, uh, I was helping someone, a company, to actually install uh, the uh, MDRS software, just helping out my friend to earn some quick bucks. And I think there's just too many of these that I couldn't remember right now. But there was one that is like a true awakening, right? Because at this point of time, I'm around like 23 or 24, and uh, there was a really good offer when it comes down to uh, uh, being a bartender in Hennessy Artistry. So it was in Orange Club, I still remember. It was really good money. Super good money that, because so good money to the point where even for me to come out, you know, have a drink with my friend, uh, I, I couldn't really fork out a few bucks to do that. So, and I said, yeah, screw it, just, just do it, right? But I almost immediately regretted this decision because, yeah, you know, people at, during 24 years old, you definitely go to this kind of event, right? So that's my friends, like people like Matthew, you know? <laughs> so, it's like, yeah, so, Wearing the very, you know, like those where you go to wedding dinner, you know, people <laughs> taking the trip. <laughs> I was exactly doing that. So, and yeah, the trip is really, I just bought it to so many friends, right? And it was very embarrassing to me because uh, I, a lot of them didn't thought that I was at this situation and doing this. Um, not necessarily they looked down or whatsoever, but just that to me, I feel very bad about myself. And, and I think because of this event, this event that happens to me, I wanted to really change the way I think about life, right? I want to be, you know, really focused and, and not just, you know, give up on, on things. So, so um, and Im immediately I actually go out, I went out to uh, look for a proper job. So there was a time I actually joined into this uh, company called Inity. So it's an advertising company, very similar to Nafteng, but Nafteng is on blog where we are on the um, websites. So the apps that you that you have you know seen in the past, maybe like the Star, Laoya, uh, Yahoo, MSN. We basically read all of those, um, and I spent almost eight years in that in that company, um, just by you know doing uh, a lot of uh, advertising campaigns for our clients. So and I think for me is is. I spent eight years over there in that business, in that company, uh, mainly because I took a really huge interest in, uh, I think, digital things. And to me, 2008 was a time when MySpace is still the biggest uh, social network. It wasn't Facebook. Facebook is just coming up. So a lot of times when we talk to clients like Sony, uh, Samsung, Telcos, whoever, right, even car manufacturers, um, you have to educate them why do why why go digital digital advertising, right? So that was the kind of pitch that I always carry for, for the many years, right? And it was the time also I realized that um, I've been studying more than ever because if you if you look back ten years ago uh, or during when I'm when I'm still studying, gaming was one of my interests, and then now I saw this as another point where I'm really interested with the things that I'm experiencing, I'm doing right now, so. I, I basically spent a lot of time in researching online, Google, good campaigns, you know, Heineken, remember, there's a fridge, you know, guys are shouting, you know, those kind of things, you know, it's really interesting, but to me, is I want to make sure that when I deliver my campaign to my clients, it really worked for them, right? So, so I did uh, so much research that to the point where the second month when I'm into the business, because I, I'm a, I started as a sales exec, I don't have a degree or diploma, so that's all I can uh, start off, right? And um, second time into the business, I was uh, already the, the, I think the, the highest sales um, achieved in the in a month for that company. Um, and my boss Fabian is a C C O O and a founder, so he came to me and gave me a balloon. So no one did this before. You deserve a balloon, top sales. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I'll confirm you right now. So fastest being confirmed in a in a in a company too. Uh, it was pretty proud to me. Uh, you, you think of it as a balloon, but to be honest, in, in the in the other parts of my like the past few years, the previous few years, none of this has actually come true before. And I think it's really due to a lot of uh, uh, invested time, effort into really just making sure that what you do is is right, right? So, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, there was still other eight, and I I spent a few years from like sales executive to account manager to senior account manager and, and eventually taking up the entire team um, and, and, and to be honest, by experiencing that uh, I actually feel very proud but at the same time um, didn't really uh, want to stick around in the company anymore so I again wanted to start my own company and I again went out to Yamcha with a few guys in the industry right? so there's these three industry veteran in the advertising so they happened to really like my idea because I think that the ad network back then that I represent is do doing it in a very manual way I think things can be automated in a very different manner because there's already stock market for ad inventory in uh, the US and the Europe uh, it's called Red Media, Invite Media we call this ad exchanges whereas locally here we still do ad network and if you realize even if you go even deeper there's a lot of prominent websites like CNN, Bloomberg, ESPN. They have a lot of local traffic like Malaysia, Singapore, which they don't sell. They do not have to sell. They only sell the US traffic. Um, and we, I found that the CPM for all this inventory at 0.01 US dollar, where you can sign to our clients over here to like say Volkswagen at 20 ringgit CPM. So the margin is just absolutely crazy, right? There's almost zero cost to your um, inventory. So we started a company almost immediately for all this. And I went out to build the product, the platform, getting the partners in, plug into those exchanges. Um, and for a few months, we have so many clients, right? Like Maxis joined us, gave us like a few hundred thousand campaign. Um, and, and there's a few more here and there as well. But to me, is I don't find this sustainable. I wanted to actually break this to, you know, um, um, I, I think kind of based on my experience as so well, I wanted to make sure that if I do something, it would not be I know, after a few months, yeah, we have to close it down. I want to make sure that there's a sustainable growth as we uh, build it. Um, so I proposed a few ideas where we can, you know, expand the offerings of our product. Just you know, beyond just you know the, the idea that I just told you about 0 0.01 and then 20, 000, 20, 20 ringgit. Yeah, um, and it wasn't really accepted by. My, my, my other partners because I think all they see is the margin, right? How much they can actually earn by doing more and more of this uh, and unwill unwillingly to, they are willing to explore new avenue to see how we can, you know, break out because I think a, a lot of times if you see the kind of companies that uh, are in app industry right now um, are no longer relevant or if they're relevant, you still, still need to compete with Google and Facebook so for me, is I wanted to basically break that cycle and, and, and want to see how we can um, do better or if not even pivot to a different type of business where you can still stand as a leader in the industry. So they didn't see that um, and um, I spent about 9 months in that business with them. Um, I, I didn't want to uh, continue because I don't really see we are aligned in terms of that vision. So. Yeah, I, I, I sold the shares to them and I say I want to quit the company. So this was uh, somewhere 2011, I think, 2011. Um, and, and because I quit my company and started one where it's sort of like a competitor of my previous boss, right? So he's actually a very good mentor because without him uh, in my entire journey of like, you know, entrepreneurial shape, it's, it's hard to actually get to uh, where I am right now, which you will know slightly more, I uh, will talk about that. Um, but I didn't really have the face to actually go back to that industry uh, or to say join nothing, to say join someone else or, or whatnot because I just felt that I kind of failed myself. I'm supposed to start a business, I'm supposed to do good and now that I, I, I'm not there, so let's try another industry. Right? So, um, and there's that not really not that much industry that you can try since I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer. I went to be a property agent, right? So and and yeah, so so property agent was something that uh, I thought would you know again 
be very different from what I do, but at the same time, I can still utilize my skill set to, to kind of, you know, uh, do something great there. Um, yeah, so, and, uh, but actually that, that didn't take very long, right? Just a few months in, um, I, I, I couldn't really be a, a, I couldn't really start any house, couldn't really uh, rent any places for my client. Um, and, and again, then it goes back to square one where all the money that I've saved to, to basically sustain for a few months is, you know, all used up. Um, so it was very difficult times because I'm nearing to my, I wouldn't say nearing, but maybe 26, 27. Um, just that it was a point of time where you, you, you really didn't want to just keep trying. You want to make sure that you have already have a firm hold of something that you know you can continue to build on and leverage on. So um, <clears throat> difficult times and my uh, ex-boss, as in uh, the ADT boss, who is my mentor, asked me to you know, have a drink in Old Town. So, so we came out, uh, we talked about the business, uh, I mean, we talked about um, where I am right now, the situation, um, and he wanted to actually have me back into the company. So I left exactly one year ago at the point, at the point that he, uh, he finds me. Um, and the position, to be honest, until then is still empty, like no one else filled in the, the position. So he wanted me to come in, uh, to, to continue you know, rebuild the team again. But I was, to be honest, really, really embarrassed. Right? I, I didn't want to face the colleagues that I left with you know, by starting a new business and now that I have to come back to the same starting point one year later. So, and I think this is exactly what he told me. Right? Um, but actually in Cantonese, right? he, he told me in Cantonese. But you never fail until you stop trying, right? I think that's, that's the key, right? Because to me, is um, he said this, as long as you don't give up, you're always winning. You only lose when you give up. So and I think this is a very huge awakening for me. Uh, Albert Einstein actually said that, so it's, that's why I put this picture there. It's not a movie poster. So yeah, and, and it's, it's really important for me because at this point, I really told myself, like, if I'm going to do anything, it's okay to fail. It's okay that you just keep having, you know, downtime again and again and again, right? But as long as you don't give up, you just keep trying, it don't have to be the same thing, it can be something else. You know, no point back in the wall. Um, but yeah, there will be a time where you would make it, make it and you'll be able to be really proud of yourself. So, um, and then yeah, so I went back to that company I went back, went back to uh, basically restart my entire career uh, with tech with Unity, and you know, you know, things started to you know start building and getting better and better. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure if anyone watched this movie. It's called Moneyball. It's pretty interesting. You should watch it, even if you don't know anything about baseball. But it's a movie about. Uh, Brad Pitt being a manager of Oakland Athletic and uh, they are the lowest budget in the baseball league uh, where they have to compete with guys like Yankee, Red Sox so, and this guy has like 10 times or 100 times on the budget so he has to figure uh, a way to compete if he don't if he, if, he, if he use the same budget he wouldn't be able to compete so he has to find out how he can utilize another way uh, to, to get that breakthrough. So, really interesting movie if you can watch it. And why do I use this is because during the time when I went back to ADT, um, although I was restarting, but I already set my goal extremely clear towards like for the next few years, what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it step by step this time around because all the failure that I've realized in my past, uh, from the time that I do the magazine, to you know, botting for a game and you know, starting the, uh, the ad network. I realized that I have good idea, then I lack in sales planning. I have sales planning, then I lack a really good market. And if I have a good market, I have all of this, then I lack a good team. So <clears throat> doing a business, being an entrepreneur is really about being as all-rounded as possible. You don't have to be the best of everything, but you need to know everything. And to me, is I, I, I find that I need to capture all this learning as much as possible before I really go out and start another.